We're on page 419 and we're going to do number three now. These are inequalities in two variables. It's from chapter 9, section 5. And the question asks you to determine whether 1 half negative 1 quarter is a solution of 7x minus 9, 7y minus 9x is greater than negative 3. So first of all, we've encountered this kind of question before, but there's something that has changed. And that something is what? Substitution. Substitution is what we did before, and we're going to do this time too. But what is different about this question than the one we did earlier on? Inequality sign. Inequality sign, right? Inequality and not an equal sign. So here we go. Step one is you substitute. So seven times... And in red, we're going to put in negative one quarter minus nine, and then on to x, which is one half. So step by step, and then we put greater than negative three. Step by step, we substitute things in. Now, we're dealing with fractions, no problem. What's seven times negative a quarter? It's negative. Nope, just negative seven over four. Negative seven over four. So that'd be negative seven over four because you multiply the tops, you multiply the bottoms. And there's nothing that cancels because there's nothing that simplifies because they don't go into one another. They don't divide into one another. This is minus nine over two. Okay, is greater than negative three. So we're getting there, but we're not there yet. Now, over here, we have a fraction that does not have the same denominator. What do we do? Who wants to offer that up? Yes, Olivia. To make the common denominator. That's right. So to make two, we have four is our common denominator. How do we get multiply by two on the bottom, multiply two on the top, so we get negative seven over four minus eighteen over four is greater than negative three. Negative seven over four minus eighteen. Write me write it. Minus seven over four minus eighteen over four is greater than negative three. Good. So it's negative 25 over 4 or greater than negative 3. There's one thing I wanted to put there that I forgot to do, which is this actually is supposed to say question mark greater than. Because this is all a question mark. We don't know whether that's true or not until we figure this out. Now that we've gotten that far, we should be able to tell. What's negative 20 over, uh, 25 over 4 in a mixed number? Not 5. Oh. Six. Six and, six and one quarter. So it's negative six and a quarter. We write that. Negative six and a quarter. You might have already gotten the answer to this right now. Negative six and a quarter. Is it greater than negative three? Mm -hmm. No, it's not. It's false. No. We put a big no. It's not greater than negative three. So is this a solution of is this a solution of this? No. Nope. No. The answer is no. No. Because we took a point, we put it in the equation for the line, and it didn't come out to something logical. A, ne a bigger negative number is not going to be greater than a smaller negative number. So that's that one. Any questions? Any questions at all? Yes, Same process as what we used before to determine whether or not a point was a solution in an equation. The only difference is we've got an inequality, and that's it. Good. Hope you enjoy it. Okay, we're at number 26 now. Same section, 9.5, number 26, page 419. We're going to graph on a coordinate plane. And when they say coordinate plane, all they mean is the kind of things that we've been using, x and y axis, coordinate plane. Uh, 2x plus 3y is less than or equal to 12. What would we do if that were an equal sign? Yes, Bam. Um, you try to get um, 3y by itself. That's right. Subtract 2y from both sides. And that's what we do here as well. We subtract. 2y, 2x, sorry, on both sides. So she subtracted 2x on both sides. You can just show that right here. Just put a little in black or something, minus 2x. Now we divide by 3. So we divide by 3. Okay. Minus 2x. Minus 2x. Divide by 3. I can. Okay. And then we get y is less than or equal to negative 2 thirds x plus 4. Now where do we go with this? Omave, what's our slope? Negative 2 thirds. Good. So m equals negative 2 thirds and b equals 4, which means we can graph it. We can graph that. And b equals 4. The point 4, 
or actually 0, 4 is what we're going to be looking for. So draw a graph paper thingy here. Everybody go ahead and do that. So we're going to plot first. We've got our y-intercept at the point 0, 4. Well, let's plot that first. Go ahead and plot it at the point 0, 4. It's the y-intercept, so it's on the y-axis. There it is. We've got one point. We need another. What do we use? Oh, you're going down. Go down, that's right. What do we do, Allison? You go down two over three. Down two over three because that's the rise over run. That's the part of the slope which we talked about which is rise over run. One, two down, and one, two, three across. Down two to the right three, and now Glenda will join the two points and you will have yourselves a line. The only thing we have to worry about now is the fact that it's an inequality. It's not an equal you sign. Shade it. You have to shade it, that's right, according to what the solution will be. Now, what this solution says is that all the y, the solution is y less than or equal to negative 2 thirds x plus 4. How do we know which points are going to be in the solution? Are they going to be up here, on the line, or down here? Daniel. I mean, you can choose any point. The That's easy, right. The easiest point will be 0, 0. You can just yes, you're right. The, the easiest point is always 0, 0, unless the line's going through 0, 0. Because we can clearly see that 0, 0 is on the left-hand side of that line. If we put in 0, 0 to this inequality, and it turns out to be true, we'll shade it. If it turns out to be false, we'll shade the other way. So let's put it in. Substitute 0, 0 in for y less than or equal to negative 2 thirds. So just put substitute 0, 0. Is 0 less than or equal to this? Negative 2 thirds times 0 plus 4. Well, in other words, we're saying is 0 less than or equal to 4. Is that true or false? True. It surely is. So this is true. And what does that mean with regard to that point there? Which way do we shade it? Down. Down. Because that is included. That point is included in the solution set, just like this. Okay, that's fine, yeah. All those points are included in the solution set, and you can try that yourself. Pick any point in there. Everybody pick any point you want. Pick a point, though, and try it, and see if it works in this inequality. Jesse, go ahead. Pick yeah. a point. Hilly, go ahead. Pick a point. Don, go ahead and pick a point. Pick a point. You can try a point here or there. If you pick a point there, I guarantee, I guarantee that it will become false if, when you put it in here. You want to put two, two in there? One, two, and two. I think it's going to come. What do you think? False or true? Omabe, true or false? Put two. Two is less than or equal to negative two-thirds. That becomes negative four-thirds. That's negative one and a third. And that becomes two is less than or equal to Negative one and a third, blah, 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 three. So it's true, and it is. It comes out true. There you go. All right, any questions on that? Now, one other thing we have to take care of is what about the points on the line itself? Because as this is drawn, as this is written, these points on the line are included in our inequality. Whenever you have this bar underneath the inequality sign, you're going to have a solid line. And so in other words, the points on the line are included in your solution. If that is just simply without that bar, if it were like just less than, then this would be a dotted or line like that. Okay, but we're not in that situation, so this is the bar which makes it equal, and that continues to be a solid line.